World War Z was kind of a crappy movie. And I'm sure that not everybody agrees with that statement, but there was a point in time when anybody who knew about the movie pretty much expected it to be a piece of shit. It seems as though the overwhelming production issues that this film suffered went unnoticed by the average viewer. But to me, they were pretty fucking apparent. I mean, sure, it's not the worst movie of all time, but the fact that it's so bland and unspecial just makes it that much more boring. It would be easier to sit through if the whole movie was as bad as the worst parts of this movie, because if you're not scared by the zombies, this movie doesn't really have that much to offer. Fear can be particularly subjective in movies, and some people get scared a lot more easily than others. When your argument for what the movie did well stops at, it was scary, then you might want to change your wording from no, it was actually good to I really liked it. The biggest problem with this movie is that the vast majority of it is so incredibly uninspired. I envy people that can get sucked into a movie they've already seen a million times in different forms, but that's just not me. I'm aware that there's quite a few people who can watch this overdone and cliched news footage intro and get sucked into the movie, but to me, it's like I'm not even watching anything. It's been done so many times that I might as well just be sitting at home and imagining it instead. I don't understand how I'm supposed to be absorbing information if none of it is new information. You just showed me three minutes of nothing. What's interesting to note about this movie is that the script had a fuck ton of rewrites. Not only was it based off of a novel where Brad Pitt's character doesn't even exist, but between 2008 and the movie's well-delayed release, it went through about five different people. And about a month before the film's release, the writer of the original book came out and said that the only thing they wound up keeping was the title. After he actually watched the movie, he found out that they did keep one character, but that's about it. <laughs> And the book <laughs> <laughs> really don't have a lot in common. <laughs> They've got a great title, and I specifically thought I would hate it because it was so different from the book. But what shocked me was it was exactly because it was so different from the book that I didn't hate it because it was just somebody else's movie. It had nothing to do with me, so I was completely emotionally divorced from what I was seeing on the screen. I didn't have a moment of like, hey, Jerry Lane would never say that moment, because I didn't invent Jerry Lane. J. Michael Straczynski invented Jerry Lane. Maybe he had that moment. If he saw it, because, you know, he wrote the first draft and it got rewritten, so maybe you sat in the audience and was like, hey, wait a minute. I didn't have that moment. I literally, like, once the title sequence passed, I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> So the reason why this film went through so many rewrites is because the original ending apparently kind of sucked. World War Z is currently going through reshoots at the moment. What's the nature of those? Well, it's just a big monster of a film, and um, that one has got to work. And there's certain, uh, how do I describe it? It's just got to work a certain way, and in areas that aren't, we got to, we got to, we got to fix them up, and that's all. We we'll get it right, and it's gonna be great. It's not, it's not unusual. In Moscow, Brad, at the premiere of World War Z, set to open tomorrow, tells USA Today that when he saw the first cut of the film, he had his doubts saying he thought it was, quote, atrocious. Paramount was seriously considering scrapping the project altogether before last-minute investor David Ellison threw more money at it. And then Brad Pitt was reportedly so pissed that he stopped talking to the director. Vulture claims that several production sources said that they were only communicating through intermediaries, so if the director had notes for a scene, instead of talking to Brad Pitt directly, he'd talk to someone else and then that person would tell him what he said. Brad Pitt and Mark Forster deny that this happened, so so believe whatever side you want. It was just fantastic to work with him, and he's one of the most gifted and iconic actors. But it would be hard to believe that Brad Pitt wasn't at least a little pissed at Mark Forrester for how he handled this movie. Brad's huge zombie bet was met with troubled production, budget overages, and incomplete and endless reshoots. That and there's an obvious financial benefit in pretending there weren't any production issues. I mean, by the time the movie was released, Brad Pitt put in a lot of effort into making making sure everybody knew it had his seal of approval. I've seen it 30, 40 times through the editing process, and, and I love it, man. I'm really, we're, we're really we're thrilled by it. People are having so much fun. It's the most intense thing you're gonna see, see all summer. It's so fun. When I first watched this movie, I didn't really know about all the production drama, but as I was watching Brad Pitt in this scene, I thought to myself that he looks weirdly unhappy. Does nobody else think that he looks kind of unintentionally pissed off in this scene? Is it a coincidence that this scene was part of the reshoots? Maybe 
Maybe it's just all in my head, but I don't think I'm the only one that thinks he looks off in this scene. Just saying. If there's one thing that really sticks out about scripts that get rewritten over and over by different people, is that a lot of the time it really loses its sense of flow. Like, holy crap, is this movie ever impatient? They literally spend two minutes pretending to develop these characters before they're thrown into the zombie outbreak scene. And that's perfectly okay if you want to get straight into the action. But if you're going to have a character development scene anyway, then could you not try even a little bit to make it seem as though you're not just checking off items on a list? Show that he has a wife and children and that he is happy with them so that the audience can relate to him without him having any real character. Show foreboding zombie footage on the television. Mention this child's inhaler that will be needed later in the movie. Did you pack your own inhaler? Force in a line that references his old job. Martial law is like um, house rules, but for everybody. Were you ever in places like that with your old job? Show the counting toy that will be used later. Look who I found. Oh. Here comes the number 12 Oh, that's not Subway Sam. Okay, we're good. Next scene. From the moment they show up in the kitchen to the start of the zombie outbreak scene is 77 fucking seconds. No, you don't get it. We don't have to develop anything because we've already shown that they're the typical American family unit. That's just the Hollywood secret. They spent $20 million for these rewrites, guys. Oh, hey, it's that really cool font that I've never seen before that shows up one letter at a time making this exact noise. So now we're in bumper to bumper traffic and weird things start happening. Why is the helicopter flying around? Why is the police officer so rude? Why is there an explosion? So everything's getting fucked up and nobody knows what's going on. Get back in your car right now! Uh, excuse me? So this is the first piece of action that happens in this movie, and already it's a little difficult to take seriously. Apparently the first six collisions this dump truck made before hitting this guy were completely silent. Unless it fit in between these vehicles? I am scared. I am also scared. They decide they're gonna follow down the path it's created, but both of their lines are very clearly overdubbed. <laughs> Our way out of here. I also like how the line, that's our way out of here, comes directly before several Capital One product placements. They're driving around in the chaos and this little girl just won't shut up. I want my blanket! Baby, it's packed right now. Snuggle with Subway Sam, okay? <laughs> Yeah, get your seatbelt on or else I'll stop paying attention to the road. So Brad Pitt collects his children and notices something about a motorhome. But for the life of me, I cannot tell what the fuck even happened. I mean, it's obvious this part only exists so they can have a convenient escape from the danger. But I am so fucking confused as to what happened here. So the RV just stops right here and the driver gets out and leaves his keys. And then he just fucking disappears. For some reason, this guy was pointing his gun at him. And then they just drove away for no fucking reason. Were you trying to steal his RV and then you changed your mind? The best interpretation I can come up with is that this guy died as he was exiting his vehicle, and somebody in the editing room forgot to add a muzzle flash and gunshot sound effect. I mean, this extra acted as though there was a gunshot, but in the scene, we don't see or hear a gunshot at all, making it really fucking confusing what just happened. I guess either way, it's just one big convenient coincidence for our main character. So this little girl drops her stuffed animal and Brad Pitt decides to pick it up and then observe a zombie transformation. And it's from this that he learns how long it takes for a person to turn into a zombie. Nine. Like, how loud is that toy that you can hear it through a crowd of screaming people? Seems like the type of thing that would be pulled off the market for permanently damaging little babies' eardrums. Good thing we were the only people out of dozens of witnesses that decided to take this RV. Quickly, everybody run this way. This looks like our way out of here. I use my Capital One Venture card. With double miles, you can actually use to fly any airline, anytime. So as if the score for the film wasn't already recycled enough, they decide to end the scene with this noise. I guess that's just one more to add to the pile. Oh no, 
the child's asthma that we briefly mentioned less than 10 minutes ago is causing her some troubles. I guess we gotta go to the pharmacy now. Man, if there weren't any children in this story, then these instant conflict plot devices might have required some writing effort. <laughs> So he gets the meds while his wife gets some food. I like how this guy hasn't clued in that he should go home yet. It's a good thing she's a child or else everybody would notice the horrible acting. Ah. Is it really too much to ask that children get cast for their acting abilities? Do they even audition anymore or do they just show their face? Adam, that's unfair criticism and your standards for realism in film are unreasonable. Children aren't supposed to be in the movie to act, they're supposed to be in the movie as a cheap way to influence plot devices. And also to serve as props as a cheap way to make the main character relatable. That's just the Hollywood secret. Here at Hollywood Studios, we've been conscious of what successful films have not only been made, but have stood the test of time. After many decades of research, we've realized that part of the process of making a successful film is having a good story. After many more years of research, we discovered that audiences respond better to action sequences if the characters in peril are ones we care about and want to survive. We then organized a series of experiments with focus groups, and over the next few years, we were presented with some startling results. Each participant in the study was shown a large rock to act as the the main character, and by the end of the test, we took a large sludge hammer and smashed the rock into many pieces in front of them. The idea was to see if their reactions were any different depending on what was done to the rock before we introduced the expectation of death or loss. What we found is that people were more responsive to the loss of the rocks if we had given them stories, backgrounds, personality traits, you know, anything we could attach onto them to make them seem more human and less like a rock. Now, unfortunately, we ran into a bit of a problem. See, the time it took to develop and explain these traits to the test subjects proved to be tiresome for both the creators of these traits and the participants involved. Some even started asking questions about the rock, but we didn't want that. Fast forward two years later, and here at Hollywood Studios, we came up with the perfect solution. We found that we were able to get near identical results with our participants after presenting the rock under special conditions. After that point, the backstory wasn't even necessary in the slightest. Turns out, all we had to do was place a dainty, slimmer rock next to it with one or two pebbles by its side. The result was outstanding. And let me tell you, I sat in for one of these sessions and they brought the sledgehammer out after about like 30 seconds and they went hysterical. This one woman just started crying. Please don't kill him! He's got a family! And then we smashed it. It was fantastic. He saves his wife from getting mugged slash raped and they make it back to their- Oh, no, they don't have a vehicle anymore. They run to some apartment buildings and just barely make it inside. We're scared. All right, so let me get this straight. When a child's stupidity conveniently initiates a plot device, we're supposed to accept it because children are stupid. But you know what the number one thing is that children are constantly doing that almost never fucking shows up in these types of lazy movies? They cry all the goddamn time. And for whatever reason, people are able to watch movies wherein children go through any number of traumatizing events, and no one ever gets taken out of the movie by how held back a child's horrible performance is. No, you don't get it. Everybody deals with stress differently. It's just a coincidence that every child character in Hollywood movies never seems to deal with stress in a way that would require acting talent. If I've never seen a movie with decent child performances in it, that means it's not possible and I should just accept it as a standard for today. Oh hey, one of your idiot children disappeared from you. I guess you gotta go find her. It's coming. Honey. It's a good thing she was randomly screaming in front of this door and not the other ones because these people are gonna let him in. Yay! Also, good job on using the same take twice. Let me in! Let me in! I bet you're exhausted. Here, have a beer. He waits until later when he knows a helicopter will be waiting for him because of his old job. He invites this family to come with him, but they say no, and then they immediately regret it after they leave. <laughs> Fuck. Let me open this door and look around everywhere except directly in front of myself. Oh no! Hey, this kid miraculously escaped. I guess he can come too now. So as you can tell, I'm not all that impressed with the action scenes I'm presented with. If I found myself being more easily scared by these zombies, then it might be a different story. Perhaps it's the annoying children and their held back screams that are taking me out of each scene. I'm scared. You say that. Well, either way, it's time to take a break from the action and deliver an incredibly boring story scene. These guys insist that Brad Pitt has to help them look for a cure because of his history at the UN. And he has to do it or else they'll kick his family off the boat. You wanna help your family? Let's figure out how we stop this. 
This mission depends on you, Jerry, and we can't do it without you. You being the man who looks everywhere but in front of yourself when entering a room with new potential threats. Well, I guess he doesn't have to be around these annoying children anymore. They just witnessed hundreds of people being murdered and they look incredibly bored. My parents are dead, but I don't give a shit. So now he's off to South Korea with this guy who's supposed to be a valuable asset. Supposedly that's where the first infection was. As soon as they land, they have to start fighting more zombies. And it's set up in such a way where it's like, oh no, you can only see the zombies as soon as they're super close because of the fog. This guy freaks out and starts running back inside. <laughs> fucking hilarious. Damn it. He died fucking instantly. Oh hey, look how far away I can see the zombies all of a sudden. The guy just shot himself. He shot himself? Oh my god, he actually did shoot himself. <laughs> It's supposed to be our best hope. Well, he's not our best hope anymore. So now he's here and it turns out he doesn't really get the information he wanted. Now our colonel said he was the first one. This colonel, is he around? Oh yeah, he's right here. <laughs> Fun fact about human biology, your fingers contain bone and tendon, not muscle. Clearly burning them does not do that much if their ashy remains can exert energy. They casually explain how the zombies went after every single person in the room except this guy. This prick stands right in the mix. Well, seven or eight of them turn Zeke all at the same time. They got no time for old dirty bastards here. And at no point does anyone think, hmm, maybe we shouldn't treat this as an odd coincidence and we should figure out why they attacked everybody but him. You flew all the way to South Korea for the explicit purpose of gathering information to try and find a cure. Is it not even worth looking into or even asking him about it? You don't wanna maybe pull out your phone and write a note? No, that doesn't seem important, so I'll just ask him something else. Once I saw Bitten, turn to 12 seconds. Same here, five or 10 minutes. Yeah, Davidson went, and he turned in 10 minutes. Oh, great, it's this scene. TV? Got this me, oh my god! My god! My god, are they eating me? He figures that the best way to stop the infection is that everybody pulls out their teeth so that they can't bite other people. All right, now I am completely baffled at how someone can watch this scene and think, yeah, pulling out your teeth with your fingers, that makes sense. Do people seriously have to try it themselves to realize how impossible it would be to get a grip? Check this shit out. Nope. Um, I'm really trying to get a grip. I'm seriously trying. Nope. Nope. Here, I, I actually got one of these, uh, grips that you use for opening jars, just to prove my point. Oh. Nothing, there's not a single fucking tooth I can, I can actually get a grip on. I'm trying seriously hard, it doesn't fucking make any sense. Are we supposed to assume that he smashed his face against the bars a few times before trying, but somehow didn't chip a single tooth? Are we supposed to assume that he was just the one guy at Camp Humphreys who already had the dental hygiene of a homeless man with no teeth? Like, come on, at least use your shirt to grip it or something. I don't understand how I'm supposed to take this seriously. Also, if you watched this in theaters instead of the unrated home video release, they just start the scene with his remaining tooth digitally edited out. And then a tooth magically appears in his hand in the middle of their conversation. Man, have you noticed how all the best movies are made with financial gain taking precedence over artistic integrity? I mean, what's the point of even having a vision for the film if you're not supposed to dismantle it to sell it to a younger crowd? And for those who think the movie might not be right for kids, Brad is letting parents decide. His kids saw the movie and his kids love zombies. You know, he's leaving the PG-13 rating up to parents. Okay, so maybe we watched it on Netflix or something? Um, we just saw, oh, Brad Pitt movie, end of the world, quit play, you know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. I, I remember I used to stay to wait for it. And I don't think it was like a fantastic film. It was just like, hey, that wasn't bad for a zombie show. You wouldn't have seen it if you knew it was a, a zombie show? Probably not. Not unless I had feedback that people that don't like zombie shows would still like it. 